Find this day as Herzl Day. Here is a visit to the Herzl Center in Jerusalem. The goal of the Herzl Center is to present Herzl not only as a towering historical figure uh, with all that he contributed to the history of Zionism, but also as a visionary whose vision remains relevant and uh, compelling even in our own day. In the multimedia display at the Herzl Center, visitors accompany a young actor who is learning about the visionary of Zionism. This young actor is preparing for a play in which he will be playing the role of Herzl. The display begins by raising the topic of anti-Semitism. In 1894, Captain Alfred Dreyfus, a Jewish officer in the French army, was falsely accused of treason, mainly because of the prevailing anti-Semitic atmosphere. This story and many other incidents of anti-Semitism brought Herzl to the understanding that there was only one solution, the mass immigration of Jews to a land they could call their own. Herzl's uh, primary success uh, was that he managed to put the whole matter of a Jewish state for the Jewish people on the international agenda. After learning of the different reactions to Herzl's ideas, we proceed to a recreation of the hall in Basel, Switzerland, where the first Zionist Congress took place. Herzl convened the Zionist Congress six times between 1897 and 1902. In this hall, we learn about Herzl's plans to actualize his vision. According to Herzl's plans, the Jewish state could not begin by a small group of pioneers who will arrive in the country. Rather, the plan must be supported by leading nations, and the Jews should immigrate to their land only after receiving a charter. To receive this charter, Herzl traveled to the land of Israel, to Istanbul, to Germany, to Russia, and to Great Britain. But the only concrete offer Herzl received was the proposal of the British to establish a Jewish autonomous region in East Africa, in Uganda. In 1905, the Zionist movement at the 7th Zionist Congress rejected this offer. And so the display in the Herzl Center draws out the point that while Herzl's vision succeeded, his method failed. Had the Zionist movement taken Herzl's approach and indeed cut off the migration until such time as we had a charter, uh, we might not be standing here talking today. When the Balfour Declaration came about, uh, I think that in part it came about because we already had a serious yeshuv, a serious settlement of Jews already living in the land. Herzl died in Vienna in 1904 of pneumonia and a weak heart, overworked by his relentless efforts on behalf of Zionism. By then, the movement he founded was already part of the world's political map. Next to a video that shows how Herzl's gravesite was moved to Israel in 1949, visitors can see a reconstruction of Herzl's room that consists of genuine personal items that belong to Herzl. Well, this is really his desk, his chair, the cups, everything you see on the table, the furniture all around it, they were all things that were taken from his home. The importance of this room is the sense that there was a very real person that stands behind this whole Zionist idea. We're trying to present Herzl as a real character. The display ends in a small theater hall where our actor practices the final act of the play. In this act, the actor brings Herzl to our time, and he compares between his vision and the present situation. This comparison gives the visitors feelings of pride and gratification, together with a feeling that there is a lot that must be improved and fixed. The same questions that occupied Herzl continue to occupy us today. The question of anti-Semitism and our response to it. Uh, personal journeys of Jewish identity, what impacts on who we are as individuals and as Jews, uh, the relationship between the Jewish community and the host and the host society. In the state that I wrote about, there was no need for an army, but in reality, you were forced to battle again and again. It's not over yet. In my book, modern technology was victorious, but even I didn't imagine the abundance of Israel's high-tech. 
I'm sure that many of you don't know that when I wrote my book, there was a debate whether the Jews deserved a land of their own. Now it's clear to everyone that we are an independent nation among the nations of the world. We went from being a persecuted minority to becoming a nation with a state, and that was worth it all.